What is your most traumatizing childhood memory? The one I can't remember. I was told this happened, but for the life of me I can't remember the event. My neighbor and best friend sister tried to drown me and her brother in the bathtub. I ended up fine, but my friend ended up with extremely mild brain damage. Nothing noticeable ever, but he wasn't allowed to receive a failing grade throughout school. What the frick? My mom pinned me down on my bed and beat me with a high heel shoe. She blamed all of her problems on me. To this day she is proud of that night. I was 9. I was about 11 and my sister was 13. We were riding our bikes across the bridge. She was in front and we were moving pretty fast. She lifted up her handlebars to hop down the curb and cross the road, never slowing down. She had put her quick disconnect front wheel on incorrectly and when she lifted her front wheel up the forks became detached from the wheel. The wheel gone. Her front forks hit the ground causing her to flip very fast over the handlebars. She never even had time to let go of the handle so the first thing to hit the pavement was her mouth. The next few minutes are a blur but I vividly remember her being unable to talk and with blood pouring out of her mouth she looked at me and tried to ask why she couldn't talk. She was in shock and opened her mouth. Feeling for her teeth. They were all gone and the roof of her mouth and upper gums had broken and was pressing down onto her tongue. It didn't make sense to me visually that when she would open her mouth there were no teeth. Just bone and blood. I tried to tell her she looked fine and just knocked a few teeth loose but she knew better. I got her out of the street and luckily a cop came by soon. No cell phones back then. When things finally settled down at the hospital my dad yelled at me for letting it happen as she had just gotten her expensive braces off. That made me shiver. Me, my brother, and my neighbor were looking for hide and seek hiding spots. We found a large empty wooden tool chest box in my neighbor's shed. This shed was a cluttered gold mine of tools and junk. We decided to see if we could all fit in there and if the lid would close. We all fit, but the latch fell down. It was the kind where the loop went through the slot and you can put a padlock through the loop. We thought no big deal. We just bang onto the lid and it would unlatch. But that didn't work. We were stuck. The others started freaking out and wanted to tip the box over. I prevented them from doing so. Because that could potentially make it so much worse. If we tipped the wrong way or tipped back but hit something and didn't go over all the way. Things could be much worse. Nearly dying of a heat stroke with very little oxygen. We had been banging frantically and yelling for help for about an hour and a half. We eventually were able to push the lid up far enough for a tiny crack. Where we could see the latch obscuring the light entering our pitch black casket oven. I broke my glasses and used parts to push the latch which worked to open it. And that is how I beat natural selection. That's very MacGyver of you. Aside from, you know, locking yourself in a toolbox. I grew up in the country and one of the farmers in our neighborhood trapped foxes and coyotes. There was a statewide bounty on them and trappers had to turn in the pelts to get paid. This guy dug a fairly deep pit each spring to dump the carcasses in. He'd fill it in at the end of the season. And sometimes sprinkle a little something in the hole to keep the stink down, but not too much. Toward the end of summer, he'd have a dozen or more skinned carcasses down there in various states of decomposition. The fresher ones on top. When I was about 7 years old, one of the older kids in the neighborhood pushed me into the hole and wouldn't help me out. I couldn't get out on my own. And he left me in there. Eventually, my dad came looking for me and got me out. But I was in there an hour or so. I... Uh, won't ever forget it. That is freaking awful. The house I grew up in had a basement that was only accessible from outside. Much like a cellar. And one day, I was about 6 or 7. I was helping my parents clean out some of the junk. We pulled out my old toy box that was filled with gross, mildewy stuffed animals and action figure body parts. I went to pick one of the stuffed animals up and it hissed at me. Turns out it was a opossum. I think I might have pee myself. I call the big one bitty. I was 8 and was an eyewitness of my father shooting and killing my grandmother, my mother and then himself. Couldn't stand nor grasp what was happening before me. Okay, yep, that's a wrap. Thread. I was 4 years old and with my parents when they we were robbed by 3 men at gunpoint. 2 men had guns, 1 pointed at each of my parents, the third took money, keys, etc. 
Then the guys tried to kidnap me. I remember screaming and clinging to my mom as I was being pulled away by one of the guys while my dad tried to fight the guy away from me. Neighbors came out from all of the commotion. So the robbers abductors split quickly. I had the worst nightmares at night after that for a few years and thought I was okay for the longest time. Then I watched Taken while on vacation with my husband last year and had a nightmare about being abducted that night. I woke up yelling this blood curdling scream that woke our hotel room neighbors up who called the front desk. I had to explain that it was just a horrible dream, which was embarrassing. On the bright side, if your parents were killed in that incident you would have gone on to become Batman. I've posted this before, and I'd rather not talk about it much, but it involved my mom pretending to put a fork in the electrical socket and dying when I was 6. Cue me running into my bedroom crying hysterically for about an hour, then my mom running in suddenly and yelling April Fools. I didn't even know what April Fools day was back then. What a bee. And that's why you don't try to teach people lessons. Back when I was 8 I had the chore of sweeping the front of the house every morning. One morning I saw a kitten under a car right next to the back wheel. I figured it would move once that car turned on. I was wrong and saw my neighbor back up and run over the cat. My traumatic memory is similar. A kitten had gotten into our yard and our dog ripped it to shreds. I thought it was gone, but surprisingly it crawled around the driveway for a few minutes before eventually crumbling under its own weight. Age 5, in kindergarten class, I being bullied, some punching, kicking, baby stuff, by a set of twins in class. When the teacher intervened, the brothers accused me of being the instigator. It was their words against mine. Pity the teacher took their word over mine, dragged me into the staff kitchen, put my hand on a chopping block, and held a cleaver to my wrist. She told me that next time she catches me harassing another kid, she would cut off my hand. On the bright side, it taught me an important life lesson at an early age that authorities will not necessarily see justice through. I choked on a mozzarella stick at a restaurant when I was 6. I would have died if it were not for the most badass old man in the world sitting nearby. He didn't even think twice when he saw me choking. He walked over, picked me up out of the booth, gave me the Heimlich, said you okay son, and went back to his dinner. He wouldn't even accept my mom's offer to pay for his meal. Today, I still get nervous when I eat mozzarella sticks. I grew up on a hobby farm along Highway 63 in northern Wisconsin. We had a menagerie of animals, and I was versed on the cycle of life. However, nothing could prepare me for what happened one summer night between the 4th and 5th grade. I had awoken in the middle of the night to flashing lights and shouting voices coming through my screen window, and realized that cars were stopping alongside our property. I slipped out of bed and down into the kitchen to get a better look, but my view was blocked by trees. So, I crept out the side door and down towards the road, where I hid myself in the ditch, covered by tiger lilies and lilac bushes. I could see my horse, Patches, laying in the middle of the road, awash in the bright headlights of a semi-tractor trailer. Apparently, the horse had escaped the pasture and was hit by the truck. As people began to congregate, the horse tried over and over to stand up, but his hind legs were broken. He was grunting and snorting, and I remember the steam rising from his nostrils in the intense light. Just then, my father arrived with his shotgun and shot the horse in the head. I cannot remember screaming or crying, but just lay in shock as the horse jerked violently until he was completely still. I was 13, a friend was walking over to return a book to me. I decided for whatever reason to let our dog Coco out into the front yard to meet them. Coco ran round kinda confused before seeing my friend and rushing to meet them. Just as Coco touched the road a car came barreling out of nowhere and hit her. I don't ever think I'll forget her death well. I still blame myself. Blame life and random misfortune, not the 13 year old version of you. Found my great grandma dead at age 5. We were alone in the house for another hour before my parents got back home. I was 5, not her. Whoa, that must have scared the crap out of you. Got cock smacked by my father. I was pretty young at the time, maybe 6 or 7, and my mom was out of town. I woke up before I was supposed to because I had to pee, and when walking back from the bathroom I walked past the towel closet. 
My dad was letting his morning wood just hang out because mom wasn't home and he thought my brother and I were asleep. He turned around because he heard me walking. And bam. Right across my face. Most awkward creepy weird thing ever for me. I want to thank you for posting this trickle of hilarity into such a depressing thread. My eldest brother thought it would be hilarious to hold me close to the edge of a cliff. The area is called Hawk's Nest it is located on the upper Delaware border of New York and Pennsylvania. So there is a rock wall in between you and the nice drop. So the bus holds me up and I get scared of course, being 4 years old and all. So I squirmed and ran away. He caught me by my foot then proceed to hold me by both ankles and dangle over slightly over the rock wall slightly looking straight down the cliff. I screamed. That's when my father noticed what was going on. After my brother put me down, my father proceeded to punch him in the face. But I'll never forget that crap. After my brother put me down, my father proceeded to punch him in the face. Yup, I think I'd have done the same. Seeing a scary, bloody man in the house in the middle of the night, only to realize it was my beat up dad after he had lost a bar fight. When I was like 2 years old I had one of those fleece bodysuits that zips up in the front. I was too young to understand the idea of a zipper so my parents had to zip it up and down for me. One day the zipper was being particularly stubborn so my dad was sort of yanking at it, and suddenly it got unstuck. And the i i i i beans above the frank. FFRANK and beans. When I was around 12 or so, I got into a stupid, petty fight with my best friend. We had been best of friends since we were 4, inseparable. I moved to the US shortly thereafter and never heard from him again, neither did I attempt at getting in touch with him. One day I received a letter in the post, it was handwritten by his mother. Turns out on his 16th day he decided to jump out of his 9th floor bedroom window. Don't blame yourself for that. I don't know if you blame yourself, but if you do, stop. Found out that my mom and her boyfriend were using my koosh bull for intimate purposes, and then putting it back in my toy box when they were done. When I was a little kid I used to watch TV with my dad. He didn't censor anything for me. I remember he was watching Sighting's popular 90s show about alien encounters. One day, in this episode they interviewed a little girl who was around my age at the time, 8ish. She said an alien had come into her room at night and touched her. This was what she said to her mother, word for word. Mommy mommy, a big white man came into my room and gave me an owie. Then they played a reenactment of a grey creeping into a child's bedroom and touching her. That freaking scarred me for life. Pretty sure that wasn't an alien. My daycare lady picked me up by the back of the neck and slammed me repeatedly face first into the snow because I knocked down an icicle off the roof with a snowball. Similar experience. My mom picked me up by the back of the neck and carried me across the house and into my bedroom before throwing me against my bed. In her defense, I think she was aiming for the mattress and not the bed frame. When I was about 10 years old I used to play on a basketball team with my brother as part of a boys and girls club. On the nights we played a team of younger kids would play before us on half court with two hoops perpendicular to the usual basket. Some parents and coaches would sit on a bench at half court cheering, while others sit in the traditional bleachers. One night as I was watching the game waiting for our turn to play suddenly the bench at half court goes flying toward the game. Instantly a man is on top of a woman beating the heck out of her where the bench was located a fraction of a second before. The crowd in the bleachers screams and in a moment several guys have a butthole, one on each arm and one pounding on his torso. People are screaming for them to let him go. I start to rush over to the brawl but had to stop myself quickly. I noticed a red color in my peripheral vision and looked down. I nearly stepped in a large puddle of blood quickly forming around the neck of the woman who had been beaten. I realized that he had not been punching her, but stabbing her. Her throat had been slashed, and later I found out that she had been stabbed in the heart. Her loved one sat at her side crying desperately while placing a purple windbreaker over her neck. Her son ran to her but a man prevented him from seeing her. Her son had been playing in the game moments before. The look in her eyes was terrifyingly vacant. She died either that night or the next day. I heard the murderer was her brother, although it was so long ago that I'm not sure of this. I still wonder about her son. Holy crap. 
I saw my mother being dragged away kicking and screaming by doctors and policemen when I was 7. She's schizophrenic. She had to be sectioned again recently because she stopped taking her pills. It's not nice to watch. Was in Amsterdam when I was 7. Parents were sleeping in the hotel room. I was flipping through channels looking for cartoons. Let's just say that image of two penises and that girl's face are burned in my mind forever. Looks like the username conundrum has been solved. When I was about 5 or 6, I was trying to watch a tape of Follow That Bird, a Sesame Street movie, and I knew how to work the VCR and everything myself. My parents had taped it off TV onto another tape, along with other shows. I knew I had to fast forward the tape towards the end to see the movie I wanted, and when I hit play, instead of seeing Big Bird, I saw the theater rape scene from A Clockwork Orange, which was on the tape before, then taped partly over. I didn't really understand what was happening, but I remember being shocked that the woman was nude, and shouted mommy, that woman is naked then my mother ran over, ripped the entire VCR out of the wall, and chewed my dad a new butthole because it was his tape supposedly. It wasn't until my late teens when I saw the movie in its entirety that I realized what had happened and why it was a big deal. TL. DR. At 6 years. Old. I wanted Sesame Street. I got a clockwork orange. I had the same problem in reverse. Wanted a rape scene but all I got was Bert and Ernie. When I was very small. Maybe 3. I saw a cool looking stick and reached for it. It was a stick insect, and it started running up my arm. I began screaming hysterically, jumping up and down and flapping my arms wildly. My mom ended up throwing a pan of cold water on me to shock me into calming down. I have been deeply distrustful of everything ever since. Not sure how old I was at the time, but I was fairly young. 10 years or younger. I was sitting on the couch in the TV room downstairs watching Blazing Saddles for the first time. My father comes downstairs and asks me what I am watching. I tell him Blazing Saddles. He asks me what it is about. I start telling him well this N has just been made sheriff. And these N. See at the time I had no idea what the meaning of N was. I had no idea what Negro meant either. None of this had ever been taught to me and I just thought N meant person with black skin just as Caucasian meant person with white skin. My dad lost it. He charges at me and picks me up from the couch and just starts hitting me. He's yelling at me and telling me how horrible I am and that he never wants to hear me say N ever again. I was so hurt. I had no idea what I had done wrong. I was just explaining the movie the way I understood it using the same language that was in the movie. My dad never explained to me what the word meant or why not to use it. For the longest time after that I just thought that my dad hated black people. I couldn't understand it at all. It was a couple of years later that I actually learned how N was offensive. All I know is that I learned to always explain things to my children instead of flying off the handle at them. Condensed version. A real estate agent ruined Christmas for me when I was 7. Whole story. When I was 7 we had just moved to a new house and it was our first Christmas there. After opening all of my gifts I had retired to the family room to watch the movie Scrooged. It was around this time that my mother had come up to me and said oh I just got a call from Santa. He said he sent one of your gifts to the old house so he's going to be coming by to give it to you. Naturally my response was holy crap I love presents and I love Santa this is gonna be awesome. Not in those words mind you but you get the idea. So I sat there eagerly awaiting him to come and give me my final gift for about 30 minutes. Now obviously my parents don't have the kind of pull to get the real Santa so they got my dad's fellow real estate agent friend to dress up like Santa and stop by to give me the gift. The problem with this was the man was a raging alcoholic. Apparently he got hammered at 9am and forgot he had promised my parents this so he literally ran to our house to make sure he was on time. So back to my 7 year old mind frame. I hear a knock on the window and look over to see this sweaty derelict looking Santa who had lost the hat. The wig. He had the beard falling off and the shirt was coming undone literally pouring at our window breathing heavily on the window with sweat pouring down his face holding my present in a black garbage bag. Needless to say I was terrified. After roughly an hour and half of crying in my room I finally opened the present and it ended up being a Sega Master System which in retrospect was one of the best gifts I have ever gotten. But that is the most traumatizing experience of my childhood. And to top it off I always see his face in the real estate listings in my hometown.
Sweaty derelict looking Santa who had lost the hat, the wig. He had the beard falling off and the shirt was coming undone literally pouring at our window breathing heavily on the window with sweat pouring down his face holding my present in a black garbage bag. I can't stop laughing at this image. This was my first experience with death other than grandparents I didn't really know. I was in first grade and my best friend's name was Aaron. He was in second grade, very athletic and the kid that everyone wanted to be in for some reason he hung out with me. So one day over the weekend we were playing in his backyard and I kicked a ball over the half size chain link fence. His dad was grilling on the other side but had left it open unattended. He went to climb the fence and his foot got stuck inside one of the holes and he fell over the fence onto the grill and the lid closed down onto him. I just stood there while he was screaming, not knowing what to do. He was nearly dead when his parents got to him and had died by the time the ambulance got there. It's the most vivid memory I have of anything. I distinctly remember the smell. This is certainly one of the most disturbing things I've ever read. As a boy burned to death, he did not die from smoke inhalation. What a terrible, traumatic thing to go through, for you and him. My earliest memory is of my mom holding me in the hallway outside my room at bedtime. I was probably 3, I must have been in a bad mood or something. Plus I was 3 and didn't really know what I was saying. My mom was about to hand me over to my dad, who was going to put me to bed. I yelled no and my mom asked me what was wrong. I glared at my dad and said I love mommy more than daddy. My mom tried to do damage control, saying that's not true but I had said it. I can still see my dad staring at me for a second with his mouth hanging open, and then his head and shoulders dropping. I've always had a stronger relationship with my mom, but I do get along well with my dad too. Obviously I didn't really mean it and was only 3, but I'm 20 now and every time I think about that I still feel terrible. Go call your dad right now. Mine is nothing compared to others, but I dropped a glass decorative angel probably worth $10 at a Randall's when I was 4 and the store manager screamed at me while I was crying and told me I should have to pay for it. We've gone to Kroger ever since. That is so fricked up. I worked at Target and around Christmas time someone dropped a huge glass snow globe and they were a worker. They said that's one way of getting rid of backstock we all laughed. I'm sorry that person was in butthole. Just know they're probably still working there. I was in my teens. Don't remember exactly. Home by myself watching TV when I heard a loud noise. Didn't think too much of it. A bit later, I see a bunch of flashing lights through one of the windows and go outside to check it out. Two guys laying in the street, a trashed motorcycle, cops looking over the scene and paramedics just arriving. I stood there watching the paramedics work. Both riders were still alive. First one was pretty quiet, but still breathing and shaking a bit. He wasn't wearing a helmet and was trying to talk, but it wasn't making sense. Just random babbling. The other one was wearing a helmet and all I could hear was a muffled screaming. I'd never heard a grown man scream before, and hope never to again. The paramedics were trying to assess the situation and the condition of the men. I don't remember exactly why, but the paramedics attempted to move the first guy a bit. Maybe lifting his neck to put a brace on? In any event, as they lifted his head, what I can only assume was brain matter started to fall out. They put his head back down and turned it slightly, revealing what I'd already guessed. Skidding across the concrete road helmetless had scraped the back of his skull off. His brain was being held in his head by the road. I guess there wasn't much they could do for him, because they left him there and went to work on the screaming guy. Several minutes later, the first guy died, all alone, while everyone else was focused on the other guy. I should have gone over there or something. No one should die alone. But I was too scared. To this day, I hate motorcycles. Reposted from a previous thread, I had a friend, let's call him Jim, and he had an older brother, let's call him Kyle, who was tall and strong. Kyle would let me and Jim take turns being folded up inside the fold out sofa bed while he lifted it up and down. It was a big thrill for a young kid. Well, one day Jim and I were alone in my family's vacation house. We decided we could fold each other up on our own. I went in the bed first, he folded me up, and I went for a ride. Next he got in the bed, I folded him up, and lifted the bed, then dropped it all the way into the couch, completely folded up, Jim was yelling to get him out, I panicked right away and could not lift him, 
I remember distinctly thinking that this was when my superhuman strength was supposed to kick in, but it wasn't happening. I ran out into the street and screamed for help. Some bewildered guy followed me back into the house and after some confusion, unfolded the bed. Jim was a little red faced, but he was fine. He'd probably been in there about 3-4 minutes total. I felt like a complete butthole for the rest of the vacation, and I got really embarrassed about it for years afterwards. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.